I'm Wesley from Builder Capital, and today we're gonna to talk about the magic of the treasure ecosystem. We'll touch on some of their games and do a brief overview of everything going on. Treasure is building a community-driven ecosystem for indie games on Arbitrum. The platform is very interconnected. Their motto is to bring games and players together through fun-first experiences. This is done via both first and third-party games, as well as offering a range of platforms such as publishing capabilities, infrastructure, and tooling to accelerate games development on the ecosystem. The central metaverse throughout Treasure is Bridgeworld. This is a place where magic, the token, is admitted and harvested. It's essentially the interoperable center of treasure that bridges all the games and other metaverses together. Treasure itself initially started as a derivative of loot back in September of 2021. They created the commodities for metaverse using treasures as a money and linked everything together with magic. Now, they distributed everything initially away for free, magic, treasures, and later many NFTs, for example, from Bridgeworld and Smallverse. We'll talk a little bit about these later on in the video and many of the other early collections also had some free distribution as they got going and since then in their marketplace trove they've done over 273 million dollars in volume since launching the other arm of this is treasure dao which is governed by staking magic and this is where they vote on strategic decisions impacting the ecosystem the magic distribution and tokenomics etc treasure was originally on ethereum mainnet and later migrated to arbitrum they did this for a few reasons that we'll talk about, but one thing you need to know is Arbitrum is not necessarily their long-term goal. They may want to one day create their own app-specific chain, but there's more details on that in the white paper. Basically, the reasons for choosing Arbitrum as their layer two were they had low gas fees, there were good security assumptions, and dev support, as you get with some of the other L2s as well. There was also wide adoption at the time they were planning to move. They had several partnerships lined up with different DeFi protocols, and they have a thesis that layer two will eventually replace the layer ones for gaming and NFTs, which is something we're kind of seeing very widespread, especially when games need so many transactions. And finally, they felt that Arbitrum had the right balance between speed and security. Now, obviously the Arbitrum narrative has done quite well this year. We've seen many new projects building and we've seen their TVL increase a lot. We've also seen several games switching over to the treasure ecosystem doing quite well. Two really good examples of that are both Kuroro Beast and Bitmates but there are other examples as well. Using some of the data from one of our portfolio companies, Helica, we can show some of the benefits Kurorobi saw when they moved over. For example, the floor price of their NFTs went from about 0.03 ETH back to almost its original mint price of 0.15 ETH. And compared to the four weeks prior, sales volumes increased more than 1,700% during the four week time span of the move to treasure. Furthermore, the massive increase of sales volume also came with new users. Their Discord went from 9.5K members pre-announcement to nearly 26K members two weeks later. Now, of course, it's not so black and white. We can't say moving to treasure did this, but there are surely some correlations and we can see that when they moved to treasure, they did do quite well. We'll talk more about the treasure games later on. To give you a brief overview of Magic, the Magic Token, players can earn Magic through playing, mining, and participating in Bridge World and some of the other games within the Treasure ecosystem. Emissions, mining, of Magic goes through a Bitcoin-like happening, except that it's every year rather than every four years, and the total supply will be approximately 350 million tokens. Million, did I get those zeros right? Six. Da, 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 da. Compared to traditional liquidity mining, the treasure goal is to make this a bit more sustainable in the long term, and you can read more about this as well in their white paper. Now, as we mentioned, each of the games within the ecosystem has its own teams. Many of these are third-party games, but the three founding members of Treasure are John, Garp, and Karel. And essentially, John has a background. He's got an MA in public affairs. Formerly, he worked on Osmosis Labs, if you got any DGENs out there like myself. He was a analytics researcher prior to that. And then we have Garp. There's less background on Garp, but he is coming from blockchain consulting, corporate strategy, M&A, and a ventures background. And if you're a big anime fan like myself, Garp is probably a reference to One Piece. And then we have Karel, the final member of the team. He previously worked in VC and asset management, and he's coming from fintech, product, and computer science background. 
between the first party and third party games, there's 15 and counting on the treasure ecosystem, but we're only going to talk about a few of them here. If you want us to dive into certain games in future videos, let us know down in the comments. First of all, let's talk about Smallverse. This is the original treasure IP featuring lighthearted and zany character universe. It began as a free mint in October of 2021, one of the highest grossing L2 NFTs to date, and it's a very prominent PFP on Arbitrum. If you spent time there, you've probably seen it. It's a story based on chain activities game, and they've established Dark Bright Studios, which is an in house game studio, to create the Smallverse flagship game in production now, and they plan to launch the playable version later in 2023. It's basically going to be a kind of life simulation game inspired by the likes of Animal Crossing meets kind of Stardew Valley. Next up, we have The Beacon. It's a popular third party game. It's free to play action roguelite RPG with dungeon crawling, social and user generated content elements. Now they launched their playable prototype back in October 2022, along with their three week mint period of the characters, which some of you may have been involved with. And they raised $2 million during an open edition mint that coincided with that game launch, as I mentioned, and their peak was 21,000 daily active users during this period. And the last game that we'll mention here is Pirate Nations. This is another third party game that most recently listed on Treasure Crow's marketplace. It's a fully on chain pirate game with dynamic pirate NFTs built on Arbitrum Nova. Questing, crafting and exploring the open seas and fighting bosses is their motto. And just for a few fun facts, since the game launched in December, medium sale value has doubled. Over 80% of their gold listed buyers held their NFT at least 30 days and over 50 percent of the buyers held for 30 days post game launch. We're grabbing these analytics from Helica as well if you want to check them out. But of course, Treasure has way too many games to cover them all in one video. So like I mentioned, if you want to see specific games, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, we'll just do a few more deep dive videos into some of the ones we like best. But in the meantime, we'll put a little bit of footage here so you can get a glimpse of some of the other games in the ecosystem. Thank you guys all for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Go check out Treasure. Go check out Helica. Go check out Builder capital. We'll put links to this all down in the description and we'll see you very soon with another video.